this guy Brian McDonald did a thread on the Twitter, and it was a great jumping off point for us to do a recap on all the crazy, crazy media headlines that came out of Russiagate. All the things, and uh, because Aaron Mate is the premier debunker of Russiagate, uh, won an award for it, and uh, which he shares with this show, by the way. I do. I do. Thank you. And because uh, I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't lay off the gas on that second gas attack in Syria. I went full, but I didn't stop. I kept going. I didn't take a break. You didn't. It's true. I came late. I was trying to come lately on that one. That's all right. You know, I, I, I'm used to being a leader. And uh, so that, so we got Aaron on. And so we're going to go over some of these headlines. But, and we put, put some of our own in, too, that were submitted by Aaron. And uh, so let's start with Brian McDonald. It says, with the U.S. and the U.K. press in full Russia hysteria mode right now, it's time for a thread on things the Anglo-American media have accused Moscow of weaponizing. We'll start with Charlie Sheen. Yes, really, not a joke. <laughs> Ready? How Russia tried to weaponize Charlie Sheen. Absolutely, we did. Absolutely, we did. <laughs> Biden has yes men. We have two and a half men. <laughs> you get one brother. You get one brother who is horny. You get the other brother who is uptight because he has child and chaos. Twitter <laughs> trolls. Five more sitcoms. <laughs> they got they have they have tiger blood missiles i understand <laughs> <laughs> they went straight for the king of winning charlie sheen <laughs> king of winning <laughs> all right it, it gets better it keeps going remember this one this is from the guardian russia looks to buy five dolphins with perfect teeth and kill her <laughs> yes yes <laughs> this is amazing these are great Russia has weaponized the energy sector in war against the West. Oh, my God. How did they wep? By the way, uh, this one, this is called Operation Flipper Fangs. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> well documented. Well documented Operation Flipper Fangs. Okay. This is what Russia has weaponized the energy sector in war against the West. Remember, remember, what could, your power could just go poof. Remember that? That's what... <laughs> Rachel Maddow said your weapon. Mm -hmm. here, now, there's a lot of these. There's like, I got 40 of these. So don't think I'm going to, don't think, Jimmy, why are you going through them so fast? We're going to be here a while. We're going to be here a while. This is, a, do you guys forget how crazy shit got? I hope you do, because this will be a great reminder. Okay. Uh, hey, Eurovision Russia weaponized disability. Oh my God. How do you. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody can figure out how you weaponize disability, I will give Aaron, you you're the guy. Make sense of that. <laughs> what does that mean? Eurovision, Russia, and weaponized disability. Well, didn't disability become a word we can't even say? So maybe Russia weaponized the discourse around the word visibility somehow. And you know this is a great newspaper or news outlet because it says Euro, Euro made in press news and views from Ukraine, and the 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 subtitles are the 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 tabs Ukraine international Russia aggression more about us. <laughs> and over here, I don't know if you guys can see this. It says about the source. So the source for this story is a guy named Ihor Vinodakulvov. And they got a picture of him, and it says about the source. So you could click there if you want to go find out about that guy. That'd be fantastic. Hey, commentary, hybrid business, the risks in the Kremlin's weaponization of the economy. <laughs> they're, they're, they're weaponizing the whole goddamn co economy. Okay, so now they're just naming things that <laughs> and say and putting weaponized in front of it. That's all they're doing. Russia has weaponized the exchange of currency for goods and services. <laughs> they've done it from from miles away somehow somehow they've done it okay russia has wouldn't the, wouldn't the answer then to become for, for us to become a socialist economy to protect ourselves from the capitalist russians who are weaponizing our capitalist system you would think nailed it nailed it i'm i'm with it i'm I, with it let's I, well, defend ourselves board. what i think the most to me i can't understand why russia just doesn't weaponize some of their weapons 
<laughs> they've got it. That's the problem. That's the problem. They're not. They're not. So they got to weaponize everything else. Everything. They're not using their nukes. They got. Right. <laughs> Russia has successfully weaponized the idea of weaponizing weapons to be weaponized. I know that. I know they've done that. Russia weaponized my bachelor party, just so you know. Mine too, man. You were at mine. That's right. Oh, that's... I was like, everybody start tweeting. Yeah. I'm getting married. <laughs> oh, that's why there was that dossier in the corner. That's okay. right. Uh, kitchen supply or weaponized by Russia coming up at 11. <laughs> hey, by the way, not to be outdone by the dolphins, there's a new alleged Russian spy. It's a beluga whale. <laughs> That's in the Washington Post, fuck faces. That's in the Washington Post. <laughs> there's a new alleged Russian spy. It's a beluga whale. Someone has to keep an eye on the dolphins. <laughs> That's, Make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. That's right. That's right. Somebody's got you got to always have someone watching so they're afraid, right? Hey, Russia's population is being weaponized. Yeah. Their population is. <laughs> what? <laughs> you say we don't have any weapons? Just look in a mirror. You <laughs> yeah. are weapons. You are you weapon. are all weapons. <laughs> are you population? <laughs> Uh, for Russia, even the language can be a weapon. <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, the sub the, su the sub headline in Russia, weapons word, weapons word, people. <laughs> in in America, you word weapons. In Russia, weapons worded you. <laughs> That's that's the old Yakov Smirnov switcheroo, right? In America, you watch TV. In Russia, TV watches you. But now it's the other way around. That's right. Now that the TV watches you in America, and and fucking Yakov Smirnov teaches a college course ab about positive thinking. That's true, by the way. University of Missouri. Look it up. Yakov Smirnov. I, I didn't know that. Well, he has his Branson, Missouri. He has his own theater in Branson. Oh, so he okay. now he's a he got his master's degree in psychology. So he teaches a he's an adjunct. It's a peculiar place, Branson. Have you ever been? No, but I got offered to go work there. I turned it down. But to, I understand it's old people watching uh, country music. A little bit. Yeah, there, there's some of that. It's basically like family Vegas, but it's what it like. There's more theater per square foot there than I think anywhere else in the world, definitely anywhere else in the United States. And I think potentially the world too, because they just have all these venues and it's like, yeah, it's like Vegas for families. Cause it's very like heartland America, get a burger and a shake. And then this like wholesome entertainment. When they first started, Oh, go ahead, Aaron. Well, I was going to say if Yakov Smirnoff was still a popular comedian today, and he wasn't on board with Russiagate and like wasn't condemning Putin every day, they would be saying that he was weaponized too, yes. for sure. Oh, for yeah. For sure. Yakov Smirnov <laughs> is weaponized, for sure. Yeah. Uh, my, when I first started comedy, uh, I started in Chicago, and um, I was doing a show at the Funny Firm in Chicago, which was a great club. And uh, anyway, these people from Branson, Missouri, saw me, and so they offered me a job. They said, hey, would you like to come down and we'll offer you a six-month contract and you will be the opening act for the Shoji violinist, some guy from Japan who was a famous violinist. And you would open, I'm like, not a fucking chance am I doing that. I mean, it, it looked, it, to have steady work was interesting, but I, I didn't want to go to Branson, Missouri for six months. Fuck that, man. That'd be, that'd be a weird mix of things i mean I, I don't know who would hear like violin music and be like this needs jokes up top it needs a <laughs> it, it needs a young comic to, who doesn't quite have his feet underneath him trying to be edgy <laughs> that's, that's not what it needed and that's who i was so they must have saw me have a good show or something where i wasn't talking about anything and uh, i'm like i'm not going to come down and do bullshit family comedy show i'm not doing that anyway that's just i think it was the right choice anyway here we go here's another one George Takai says sexual assault allegations are a Russian conspiracy. That's right. Yep. No. Yep. So if if there's anything 
that I mean, this is this is sort of sort of a classic Russian operation where they where they try to use an out of work actor's uh, reputation and drag it through the mud through a sexual allegation without without having a point. (laughs) (laughs) Jimmy, you are doing, if I can guess correctly, you are doing an an impression of Luke Luke Harding. Harding, Yes. The yeah. esteemed British journalist who I interviewed once, who yeah. basically said that everything under the sun is a Russian, it's a classic Russian disinformation operation. And of course, when pressed to produce any evidence for all the stuff he was saying, he said, I'm a storyteller. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller. Of course. I mean, of course. Well, if Jimmy's really committed to this impression, you're going to ask him a question and he's just going to walk out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was the first thing I saw you do. You interviewed that Luke Harding, and I watched it, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, they they got nothing. These people have nothing. nothing. They, they they literally. And then Jim Risen, you interviewed him, and he did the same thing. He just walked off yeah. your show, or yeah. he hung up. They, yeah, they both hung up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> couldn't answer a question. You were being super polite. You weren't calling names. You weren't yelling, raising your voice. You weren't interrupting them. No. They, they, they couldn't handle a conversation about Russiagate where you asked for evidence. That's Jim Risen, bullshitter extraordinaire, and one of the fucking biggest Russiagating McCarthy <laughs> bullshitting bullshitters that there ever was. And he completely, in my eyes, has ruined his reputation as a journalist. But they Absolutely. all did it. They all did it, though. There isn't Absolutely. a journalist yeah. in America besides you, Matt Taibbi, and Chris Edges that's worth a shit. And you know it. Well, and during that time, the only place I could discuss this was the Jimmy Dore show. And I feel it's not just journalism that embarrassed itself. It's comedy, too, because as you guys were making fun of all this and having a great time because it was so funny. I mean, look at these headlines. All these late night shows were making, you know, gay jokes about Putin and Trump and they were going along with it. And Stephen Colbert was crying uh, because uh, because of how Trump made him feel. And basically acting as a parody of a liberal host instead of making fun of the prevailing liberal craziness around Russia. So it was bad for everybody, not just journalism, but mainstream comedy, too. They missed a huge opportunity to make fun of this. I I couldn't agree with you more. It was very disappointing to see more people not follow my lead and make fun of Russiagate and debunk it. And that's the thing. Comedians. But the propaganda was so overwhelming. I mean. You have to you'd have to be in, in politics to figure out that it was bullshit. Yeah, almost. Right. Because everywhere you turned, it was Russia Gate, Russia Gate, Russia Gate. Uh, let's keep going. Russia. Russian operatives were promoting sex toys on Instagram to sow discord in the U.S. <laughs> I think it was sowing other things. They're weaponized. Discord is sown. Discord is sown right before orgasm. Everybody knows this. <laughs> what are trying to weaponize dildo. <laughs> the funny thing about this one is that this aspect of uh, Russian weaponization was actually cited in a Senate report. Yes. It has the seal of the U.S. Senate. And they produced examples like this to make the argument that Russia was trying to recruit assets in the U.S. by exploiting their vulnerability. So people with, uh, you know, sexual interests or people even with masturbation issues this was listed in an official Senate report as an example of, quote, Russian asset recruitment. And it had the Senate, the Senate Intelligence Committee's official stamp on it. Oh, this they is an were, actual government document. They were assets, all right. Step one, make <laughs> mega butt plugs. Step two, <laughs> take over universe. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. MAGA butt plugs. You know they exist. You know they exist. <laughs> they got to be out there somewhere. If you could think of it, it's it, it got made. It got made. You know it exists. <laughs> There's M- MAGA cock rings. You know that's out there. <laughs> uh, Putin suggested Trump's controversial new foreign policy move. Oh, God. For the first time in 70 years, the United States military won't participate in joint exercises with our South Korean allies. Trump got the idea from Vladimir Putin. God, right. sweet God. That's, that's literally... That's, and, I, and I get the shitty Wikipedia page, not, not MSNBC. 
I get the shitty Wikipedia page. Do you get the shitty Wikipedia page, Aaron? I don't have one, thankfully, because, you know, as you talked about on your show, there's this cabal of people with shady ties, probably to the intelligence world, who basically edit any, you know, remotely, um, uh, like anyone with a remote big audience who is an anti who, who who tells the truth about regime change and U.S. intelligence operations around the world. So people like you, people like Max Blumenthal, they go in and they just they take over their pages and they smear them. You know, in the case of Max, like if The New York Times gives him gives his first book a positive review, these people take that out, take it out and then link and then link to some blog saying Max Blumenthal is accused of being a Kremlin, blah, blah, blah. And they'll put that instead. So like I Wikipedia, Wikipedia has become a complete scam. I don't mind Wikipedia putting in the negative stuff, even yeah. if it's untrue. But why won't you let me put in all the positive stuff? Like that's supposed to be a fucking encyclopedia. It's not yeah. supposed to be a hit piece on personalities, which is what yeah. it is. It's like, why can't I put in all the quotes from Bill Burr and Brian Regan and all the great comedians who've known Norm MacDonald, all the people who've said great things about me that are documented why can't I put that or Joe Rogan? Why can't I put that up on my Wikipedia page? Those are facts. Can't they just wipe them off? You can't even cite a gray zone article. Right. They won't allow you. You guys are not allowed to be so, used as a source on Wikipedia. Yeah. And that was a bunch of people who support regime change in places like Venezuela and Syria got together and basically forced through this decision. There was some internal protest, but they won. And so, you know, look, we publish journalism. We put a lot of work into it. You can't challenge us on the facts. Nobody does. All they do is smear us. And in the case of Wikipedia, it got to the point where they managed to prevent anybody from citing us. Even if I write in the Nation magazine about a topic I've covered at the Gray Zone, so the Syria right. OPCW cover-up scandal, you can't even cite my article in the Nation magazine. Even though no one's challenged anything I've written substantively, people have called me names, but you can't challenge us on the facts. So it's like, Wikipedia has been uh, taken over by some really shady people, and they go after the voices who really challenge power. It's uh, it's crazy. And why can't we sue them? Uh, I imagine uh, it's a good question. It's a good question. Actually, we should we should uh, look into that. I mean, it just it's seems it's, it's just right now they have complete lies up about me. They they yeah. have they have a, a a section in there that CNN said Jimmy Dore is a conspiracy theorist spreading uh, conspiracies about the false flag gas attacks in Syria. Well, I didn't spread th any conspiracy theory. I debunked the conspiracy yeah. theory, and I've been proven right because of the four all PCW whistleblowers that have come out subsequently, which they won't let us put in the Wikipedia, and they won't let us say that CNN got that story wrong. Yep. That yep. Story doesn't, they, yep. They'll quote CNN, who got the story wrong. Saying that I got it wrong, but I got it right. That that that, and, and so I should be able. That that's a verifiable slander. Mm -hmm. And so why is Wikipedia allowed to slander you? Because because why? I don't understand why they got to have some responsibility. The answer is they have no integrity, and in fact, they're compromised. There, there's a great article at the Gray Zone by Ben Norton where he looks at the main actors behind Wikipedia, Jimmy Wales, the founder another top level person there. And they have deep ties to the national security state in Britain. And I believe in the U S as well. And that's what they're, that's what they're doing. They are using their platform to smear the voices who are making a difference and challenging pro-war propaganda in the U S and we live in an Aurelian propaganda system where people have the illusion that we have, you know, a free exchange of information, but we don't anybody who actually challenges power, in a real way, like you do, like we do at the gray zone, they can't debunk us on the facts. So they have to smear us and even publish false information on what's supposed to be a public site of yes. free information like Wikipedia. It's a, it's a complete scam. It's a Wikipedia is a complete scam. Uh, completely. And I, I, I should be able to, I think I'm going to look into suing them. I, I actually, I'm sure I'm sure there's a technicality why you can't, uh, just like yeah. why you can't sue Facebook. But another thing is, what's weird is that Wikipedia is like, if you Google my name, it's like the first thing that comes up. Why the fuck mm -hmm. is that the first thing that comes up? Does, does Wikipedia and Google have a fucking 
Do they have some kind of an agreement? We're going to rank your Wikipedia number one. So if you want to smear people, here it is. I would not be surprised if that were true. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But I would not be surprised if there was something going on there. Okay. Back to this sketch. Michael Tracy tweeted out Tillerson, who was our first secretary of state under Donald Trump, former uh, CEO of Exxon. Tillerson was hired because he was so friendly to Russia and then fired because he was too so tough on Russia. It's almost like you can make the Russia gate thesis comport with any eventuality, regardless of fact pattern. So what he's pointing out is that everybody was saying, oh, uh, t- they hired Tillerson because he's he's in bed with Putin and Russia. Right. But then Trump fired him and they go, oh, he's fired him because Tillerson's too tough on Russia. <laughs> so what, however way it goes and what he and he's pointing that Michael Tracy is correctly pointing that out. There are clips of it from the Rachel Maddow show when. She first introduced this theory. She she talked about Tillerson and she said he must have come highly recommended. And then she cuts to a picture of Tillerson meeting with Putin. Right. And then whatever, how many, however many months later, when Tillerson gets fired, she was like, you know, sh- like screaming and hyperventilating because she was saying that it was because Tillerson had tried to stand up to Russia. So, yes, this is the beauty of being in a cult and believing in these crazy conspiracy theories. Any piece of factual information can be twisted to meet your conspiracy theory. It, it never fails. It's a, it's an unfalsifiable theory is what they call Russia gate. So Absolutely. No, so no matter what they do, you just go see, uh, that, uh, Donald, that, that, that proves. Yeah. It, no matter what, when, go ahead. Well, and when Mueller finds no conspiracy, right. After like the most exhaustive investigation in history, the FBI, you know, um, uh, like hundreds hey, of uh, Aaron. Or, yeah, Aaron. Uh, how much did it cost? Do you remember? It was in the tens of millions. I forgot the number, uh, but it was a lot of money. So after one of Great the most co- comprehensive misguided history, Mueller finds nothing, and then what? It, what has it become? Mueller wasn't allowed. He wasn't allowed to look. Uh, yeah, at the money, at the counterintelligence concerns. God damn it, Mueller! Like they spent two years worshiping Mueller. He's our hero. Saturday Night Live is singing songs about Robert Mueller. There's prayer candles about Mueller. And all of a sudden, he doesn't find a conspiracy. Now he's a bad guy. Or he was thwarted from getting to the truth. It just, the conspiracy theory cannot lose. Here is another one. Uh, So this guy, so Lawrence Tribe, uh, (laughs) I'm going to guess he's a big Russia gator. He retweets Michael Tracy's astute observation and says, not at all. It looks like Russia picked Tillerson to be a Putin puppet, then pushed Trump to fire Tillerson when he proved to be an unreliable (laughs) puppet. Law professor. That guy's a law professor at Harvard, I think. So no matter what happens... Again, just as 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 if he you needed an example of what Michael Tracy was saying, he just gave you it. Exactly. So Michael Tracy yeah. says this is how it fucking works. No matter which way it goes, people say, and then he goes, "Well, I'll show you how it works." That's Lawrence Tribe. That's what he did. And they're not. And these are grown up people with degrees, and they're dumber than a fucking jagoff comedian who's high as a kite. Lawrence Tribe, I'll debate you. I'll be high as a kite. And I, I went to, I didn't go to great schools. I went to Columbia College, which is a great school for arts. <laughs> but it's not a brainiac college. Right? That's why I went there for the arts, because I'm in the arts. Uh, here's another one, Washington Post. How Putin's Russia uses Soviet-era tricks to evoke racist white fears. Holy shit. I love the Washington Post. Time Magazine, how Russia voters fueled the rise of Germany's far right. Russia! They're controlling everything. A country that has a smaller GDP than California is somehow controlling the United States, Europe, Germany. It's Isn't it amazing? They're... Why do why I wish we were as half as effective as Russia? Start making our butt plugs. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about people who are covering up for white supremacy. When it's done on the right, it's pretty obvious to see and it gets called out. Yes. What what about when it's done on the liberal side and people are so unhinged 
that they're trying to suggest that there's some even remote connection between Russia and white supremacy in the U.S. In the U.S. A country founded on slavery. Slavery. A a lifelong legacy of racism uh, up to the present day. And white liberals are trying to say with a straight face that Russia has something (laughs) to do with it. And trying to suggest in the most condescending way that Russian social media ads were so sophisticated and black voters were so malleable that they got duped into not voting for Hillary Clinton. That's literally what Hillary Clinton and her colleagues argued, was that Russian social media convinced blacks not to vote for her. That's right. Hillary Clinton actually said that, which is an extreme expression of white supremacy and contempt for black people in this country. Because that means that you think that black people are so malleable and vulnerable that these dumb Russian social media ads can convince uh, black people not to vote for Hillary Clinton. And of course, Hillary Clinton would never say that she could be swayed by a Russian social media ad. So what does it say about her attitude towards black people? It shows that there's outright contempt and she's willing to basically adopt a white supremacist attitude to justify her loss to Donald J. Trump. It's And we never call that out. We only call it out when it happens on the right. Another one, how Russia harvested American rage to reshape U.S. politics. <laughs> <laughs> they harvested American rage. And you know what they did? They reshaped American politics. When, when did that happen? Because uh, American politics has pretty much been the same since I've been around. Uh, Reaganism or even lightly shittier than Reaganism. So when did, when did they change this? I, I can't tell you, Rod. I, think that, I don't think it has changed. But that the New York Times said they did it. So it has to be true. <laughs> They've we, never led us astray before. Ever. <laughs> Malcolm Nance, Russians hacked the mindset of the American people, could throw 28 midterms into doubt. <laughs> yeah. They hacked the mindset. I mean, these guys are such geniuses. And it all happened. It never happened before. It all started in 2016. Oh, isn't that something? Russian 2016 influence operation targeted African-Americans. On, that's what you're talking about, Aaron. It's honestly, if you look at these ads, we've talked about them before. These ads are so stupid and juvenile. They weren't even about the election, except for a very, very small percentage. They barely reached the battleground states. Uh, and they, again, they're not about the election. They're about like dumb Jesus memes and buff Bernie memes and... Uh, uh, you know, there's like a Yosemite Sam meme where he's angry about not being on TV anymore because he because he has a gun. That it was like a gun ad, and these liberal institutions, the the cream of the crop, the New York Times, put out article after article like this, somehow trying to imply that Russian social media ads influence the black vote, and that's what explains why black people didn't turn out for Hillary like they turned out for Obama. Could it be maybe because Hillary Clinton was? a uh, presided over a neoliberal legacy with her husband and then the Obama administration that uh, that increased or, or, or that decreased uh, black home ownership that uh, expanded the carceral state uh, where Hillary Clinton called uh, young black kids super predators. Might it have something to do with any of that? No, it's because Russian social media ads fooled vulnerable black people to not voting for her. Here's another one. How the media became one of Putin's most powerful weapons. <laughs> the, just the media became a weapon. The economy is a weapon. The media, the population is a weapon. Everything, there isn't any, the language is a weapon. And we would never weaponize the media in the United States. I mean, the, in the United States, the media has never like tried to get a bogus war or anything like that. That's never happened here. Never. And in his election campaign, what was Trump's most powerful weapon? It was the media who gave him billions of dollars worth of free airtime. And that is what all this Russia stuff is partly about. It's about blaming Russia for the failures and dysfunctions of U.S. elites, including the media, who gave Trump all this free airtime. Les Moonves, the president of CBS, said that, you know, it's a great time because the money's rolling in because of Trump. He's. He and said, it, he said it's bad of, for America, but it's good for CBS's profits. That's what he said. Exa- exactly. Exa- yes. Yes. And so instead of reckoning honestly with that, everything that get, then gets projected onto Russia. And then not only is Russia blamed for everything that these U.S. elites actually did, 
But these U.S. elites actually do what they're accusing Russia of, which is pushing disinformation on the U.S. public. That's what they are doing themselves. There's no Russian disinformation campaign. There's a Russiagate disinformation campaign. So what what so what the American press and the establishment is actually doing is the thing they're accusing the Russians of doing, which is using propaganda to influence the American voter into not doing what's right. And Absolutely. that's exactly what Russiagate was. The Russiagate was uh, to instead of the Democratic Party and the establishment media having to reckon with pushing Donald Trump and allowing and giving him all and Chris Hayes covering John, Donald Trump's empty podium instead of Bernie Sanders speech, which he did. I saw him do it with my own eyes. Uh, now it's, it's not their fault. It's somehow someone else's fault. It's got to be Russia. And that's exactly what Russia Gate was. And people still don't believe it. I mean, I people who know me personally and watch my show still think Trump's a psychopath and we can't have him close to the nuclear button. It's like, you realize that George Bush and Dick Cheney were way, way more authoritarian than Donald Trump, way scarier, tried to get way more. They were breaking way more fucking norms than Donald Trump did that people have no idea still to this day. They think that that Joe Biden is the reasonable alternative to Donald Trump instead of the way more dangerous with way more blood on his hands, a way worse li- history and a way worse body count, Joe Biden. Donald Trump didn't or Donald Trump didn't orchestrate our in- our incarceration system. You know who did that? Joe Biden. If can you imagine if Donald Trump came up with the crime bill that incarcerated <laughs> black and brown people at the at and and somehow that Joe Biden did, and he's seen as the antidote to racism. We're the world's largest penal colony. We have 5% of the world's population. We incarcerate 20-some percent of the world's pop- incarcerated population. Isn't it something like one out of every 10 black person in prison is in prison in the United States? It's even. I bet it's worse than that. I think it's like one in seven. Don't quote me on these numbers. But it's it's, it's, cer- it's really the highest in the world, and it's certainly true that Joe Biden has major responsibility for that as the author of the crime bill. And, you know, his son Hunter has a new book out about his addiction. Who should be in prison by Joe Biden just kicked everybody out of his administration who admitted to smoking pot. But he, we still yeah. we're still supposed to roll out the red carpet and feel sorry for Hunter Biden. Well, I do feel sorry for Hunter Biden, but I also think that the sympathy that we have for him should be applied equally to everybody. And it's just telling the how differently our system treats people based on their class and race right. and so, uh, privilege. Right. So I, I, I see what you're saying. So what you're saying is that not that we shouldn't have compassion for drug addicts, right? People who are addicted because they're but for the grace of God go I, right? Um, but what I say is if I... If I was looking through carpet for crack <laughs> and got caught, I would be in fucking prison. Yeah. I I I wouldn't be get, getting $80,000 a month gigs on a Ukraine energy board. I'd be in prison and I wouldn't be able to go do interviews so people could feel sorry for me because I'm a crack addict who got an $80,000 no-show job in the Ukraine because my dad was vice president and I never had to do a day in prison. You're not a sympathetic figure, Hunter. You're not a sympathetic figure. I have sympathy for people who are addicted to drugs. I don't have sympathy for Hunter Biden. I don't have sympathy for someone who takes advantage of their privilege while his own father is is fucking over as hard as he can people who are doing the exact same thing as Hunter Biden. And he's not saying shit about it, Hunter Biden, is he? No. Is he saying that these people shouldn't be in prison and my dad did the wrong thing and he should try to write that right now? No. Hunter Biden should be in fucking prison and I have zero sympathy for him and his drug addiction. <laughs> well... I have sympathy, but I agree also with everything you said, that it's true. He's not using his position to call out his father and the U.S. system uh, for the injustices towards people that have done the exact same things that he did, but who face a much different fate. So I I think that's a really good point. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like making good points. (laughs) Push back. Push back. With Jimmy Jordan. All right, here's another one. Migrant crisis, Russia and Syria weaponizing migration. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> what a segment. Weaponizing migration. Come on, Ron. They're weaponizing <laughs> migration. Just when you thought we were out, there's one more. <laughs> That's another case of the U.S. and the West blaming Russia for something they helped cause. So they're referring to all the refugees flowing out of Syria. Why are refugees leaving Syria? Does it maybe have something to do with the fact that the U.S., the U.K., Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey poured billions of dollars of weapons into Syria and let tens of thousands of jihadi fighters from around the world cross the border easily from Turkey into Syria to fight a dirty war. And mo and a lot of these sectarian fanatics who were let in were bent on sectarian mass murder, killing Christians and Alawites. So of course people were gonna flee. And so you cause a problem or you, or you at least play a major role in causing a problem and then you blame Russia and Syria for it. It's just so, that is one of the most cynical ones actually so far. Well, here comes another one. America's racism has long been Russia's secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> this, this whole this whole segment, it's like they're, they're creating the most uh, random vector gadget character ever. Like, go, go, gadget, American racism. Go, go, gadget, migration. Go, go, gadget, language. <laughs> Russia is weaponizing Mike Ditka's anger. <laughs> Imagine if you met a human being who personified the attitude of all these headlines. Russia's doing this. Russia's doing like Russia. You know, like you would think this person is fucking nuts. They'd be committed. They would be committed. Uh, they, I got they need bad serious news, help. Aaron. I, I think some of those people are out there, dude. <laughs> they're they're out there. They're, I think some of those people do, in fact, exist. I, I'm pretty sure one of them's called Jake Uger. <laughs> Another one is called Rachel Maddow. Those those would be two off the top of my head. Okay. And that's the that's the beauty of our propaganda system. It's so well that we'd expect MSNBC, CNN to go along with the stuff. That's what they do. They they're not objective journalists. They exist to advance the propaganda of the establishment. But during Russiagate, what did we see? Not just the establishment media, even the, but even the so-called anti-establishment media like the Young Turks, like Democracy Now!, like The Intercept, where the editor-in-chief was talking about there being soft, loose collusion. Uh, and Jim Risen, The Intercept's uh, chief correspondent on this stuff, was pushing this Russiagate fan fiction. Even they got duped by it, too, which speaks to not just their own uh, how, just how, uh, like what dupes they are, but also how effective our propaganda system, how it even incentivizes so-called anti-establishment outlets to drink the Kool-Aid. Um, it's just nice to know that I'm a better journalist than everybody at the intercept. It's just, that's just a <laughs> fact. That's just a fact. That's not, that's, I know that sounds like a joke. That's literally a fact. I'm not a McCarthy smearing, Russia gating conspiracy theorist. That makes me, in fact, I debunked it. That makes me a much better journalist than any of those people at the Intercept. Now that Glenn Greenwald's gone. Yeah, the only one who didn't uh, go along with it, the one who pushed back on it, he was forced out. The guy who founded the outlet. Glenn uh, Greenwald. He was forced out. Glenn Greenwald, that's right. Uh uh, from Huffington Post, one in three black men will go to prison in their lifetime. That's based on a report from 2003, but even if incarceration rates have somewhat declined since then, the numbers are still damning. That's from, okay, so here we go. Keep go uh, and this is my favorite one. I don't know why I saved it, but this is my favorite one. It's number slide 24. Here it comes. I hope you can see it. Russian army demonstrates latest weapon, cuddly puppies. Oh, I forgot this one. <laughs> I forgot this one. That, Rod, what did what did Putin say about those puppies? <laughs> gadget puppies. Oh, go go gadget puppies. You think it's a cuddly puppy, but it will start sending memes as soon as you pet it. Is it? We will use their adorableness to upend the electoral system. How, how do you weaponize cuddly puppies? Oh, I wish I had that story. 
You think it's saying woof, but it's really <laughs> saying don't vote. Don't <laughs> vote. <laughs> There actually was a New York Times analysis of this, and they're trying to figure out what were the puppies for? And what they say is, although it's unclear what the Russians' motive was in setting up the puppy pages, some analysts suggest that it may have been to attract a general general audience who likes puppies and then use that audience to flood them with Russian propaganda. I'm paraphrasing, but that was the basic message. Jesus Christ. The this old is bait, in the New York Times. It's the old bait and switch, huh? We'll get, use the cuddly, old bait and switch. Use the yeah. cuddly puppies, then we sell them a yeah. car. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, puppy, the, the puppy puppies ganda. are... Puppy ganda, as I called it. Puppy yeah. ganda. <laughs> yeah. The puppies are a weapon, but just so everyone knows, my ferret is just my ferret. Ah! <laughs> 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 the weaponization of postmodernism. Oh my God. Russia's new war with Europe. <laughs> the, the weaponization of postmodernism. What in the effing F are you effing me? Breaking news Putin has weaponized Renaissance literature. <laughs> you can't. Michelangelo's art weaponized. <laughs> when will it end? Postmodernism. I don't even know what that really means. Is that is that postmodern? Does that mean postmodern writing or postmodern architecture? Isn't architecture called postmodern? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they mean the whole era or if they mean literature. I mean that's the route I took it. Literature, but, uh, right? Literature. But it's amazing. They mean literature, right? <laughs> I I have a handicap here because when I tried to read post, oh, they're gonna we- they're gonna weaponize your handicap. Oh, uh, they're my, my disability. Yeah, <laughs> Aaron never, needs a weapon now. <laughs> I, I never understand really postmodernist literature when I've tried to read it. So I'm I I have a deficit here. But I, what I think this might mean is that's that that's because you can't read a weapon, Aaron. You can't <laughs> read. <a weapon. laughs> Please continue. There's this there's this whole like uh, branch of Russia Gate. Uh, discourse, which is that Russia has like turned reality on its head, so you don't know what is real and what is not. The Russians have done that to us. Like Masha Gessen writes about that in the New Yorker in the New Yorker magazine. She's supposed to be like the thoughtful uh, Russia Gate uh, writer, when really, and and she sometimes like criticizes a little bit, but really she finds new ways to justify it. And so she's written about how Russia has inverted reality, so Americans don't know what what is real or not anymore, and the Russians are confusing us. And that's what I suspect is is the weaponization of postmodernism. But of course, they're ascribing to Russia what they are doing themselves. It's an it's a giant projection. That's all it is. It's a, just as a, I'm studying Carl Jung. This is exactly what that is. Like they're projecting their shadow onto mm-hmm. the Russians. In Russia, weaponizing refugees to is Russia weaponizing refugees to advance its geopolitical? They're weaponizing refugees. This is very much like weaponizing migrants. Yeah, very much wow. like that. <laughs> this is your jur- This is your Western uh, corporate journalism. Fuck faces, enjoy it. You know, if there's a state in the world that has weaponized refugees, it's Israel where there are millions of Palestinians living in refugee camps in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Syria, because they're there because they were expelled by Israel. And Israel has our full support. We supported Israel in all of this. Imagine a headline in the U.S. press about the Israel's weaponization of Palestinian refugees. You would never, ever see that. No, no. Uh, By the way, AOC was asked about the Israel-Palestinian conflict. I have a video we're going to show later. It's the one you sent me. Uh, Russia's weaponization of tradition. <laughs> they're, they're weaponizing tradition. The case of the Orthodox Church in Montenegro. That's from 2020. That's from September 25th, 2020. Wow. That's from the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Boy, it sounds really smart and official and like they're crossing their T's and dotting their I's. They're just a bunch of fucking Alex Jones maniacs. <laughs> That's all. At any given moment, that that the American press corps, every one of them can turn into Alex Jones, and in fact, they did for the last five years. 
<laughs> the difference between them and Alex Jones, Alex Jones sometimes gets shit right. <laughs> you know, every Christmas Eve, my family does a traditional seven fish dinner. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> the weapons are lining up for us. Who else does this? <laughs> Here's the uh, mail, Daily Mail. Uh, can, can Russia control the weather? Climate, <laughs> climate researchers say CIA fears hostile nations are triggering floods and droughts. <laughs> if they could do it, why couldn't we? And why would there ever be a drought? Uh, Putin's <sighs> Russia has weaponized World War II. <laughs> <laughs> it's back baby <laughs> it's our weapon now world war ii is in the chamber <laughs> <laughs> we will shoot Put it. it next to the refugees eventually we're going to have to alphabetize this stuff it's getting confusing <laughs> this is this is so much fun is 14-legged killer squid found two miles beneath Antarctica being weaponized by Putin? Yes, that is right next to the sex toys. 14-legged killer squid found two miles beneath the Antarctica. Is it being weaponized by Putin? It's the subheadline. Want to hear it? A killer giant squid that can hide... Can they... Hypnotize its prey and paralyze humans at a distance of 150 feet using poisonous venom is being developed as a secret weapon by Vladimir Putin, a scientist has claimed. I wonder if in, Putin, in Putin's lair, he then he organizes like matches between the the like his beluga and the squid, <laughs> and they have like you know like they face off. No, not the with the squid. Not with squid. <laughs> Only thing I did with squid, I took picture with it when I didn't have shirt on. But that was it. <laughs> Other than that, I left squid alone. How Putin's Russia turned humor into a weapon. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's by Olga Robinson. Olga Robinson from the, for the BBC. That's in the BBC. How Putin's Russia turned humor. Everything's a weapon. I mean, do you? After, do, I mean, if this after is. After they. Go ahead. After they wrote that article, they protested outside of BBC Four. You don't know this. You're weapons. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all weapons. Where's Ricky Gervais? He's the most powerful one. We got to get him out of here. Quit laughing. You guys, that's a weapon. <laughs> Cancel the in betweeners. Russia reportedly used Pokemon Go in an effort to inflame racial, racial tensions. Oh, my God. You collect them all and you think you win, but I win. These are the people who say Alex Jones is crazy. These are, these are those people. These are the people who call us crazy. And who say that they care about racism. Yeah. <laughs> if you care about racism... How can you say that headline or write that headline with a straight face? Right. Russia reportedly used Pokemon Go in an effort to inflame racial tensions. Do you think Russia or anyone can use Pokemon Go to inflame racial tensions? If you do, then you don't care about racism. You're, you're saying that you think racism is a joke. Yeah, That's it's, it's like saying. a cartoon. Like racism is kind of a cartoon. Yeah. 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 Russia accused of weaponizing space after anti-satellite missile test. The U.S. Space Command said Russia had tested a missile system that could destroy satellites in low orbit. <laughs> when will Russia weaponize God? Oh, I wonder if that's coming. Hang on. Weaponizing misinformation to destabilize the West. UK Defense Secretary Sir Michael Fallon warns of Russia hacking. They're weaponizing misinformation. This is this thing is misinformation. This whole Russia gate is misinformation. The whole thing. Try to tell somebody that. Aaron, how do you, I mean I still every day because I run into regular people who aren't in journalism, uh, and I tell them about this and they still won't believe it. Even someone, I, I have a friend who's an astrologer, 
Yeah. She 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 believes a straw. She believes Russia Gate. Well, is she okay with space being a weapon? Does she know that part? Uh, that's what I'm saying. And she watches my show. And she still thinks that Donald Trump is somehow uniquely evil, crazy, that this stuff might be true. And it's heartbreaking to me. It's like, oh, it's just, there's just. And again, it, it's because they were subjected to exactly what all the outlets that they're reading are accusing Russia of, a massive disinformation campaign constantly, every single day nonstop getting so ludicrous as to accuse Russia of weaponizing all these fallacious things. And it was done for a bunch of, of reasons. And it hit vulnerable people who were so afraid of Trump, who were aggrieved by his victory. And they took advantage of that. They, they, they did the exact same thing that they accused Russia of, of exploiting people's vulnerabilities. People were traumatized by the Trump victory. And also people generally wanna be part of a, of, of a community, of something. And this was all that was presented to them as how you can oppose Trump, how you can be the resistance. It's to blame Russia for everything and to, instead of organizing around issues that impact your life and the life of your neighbor, like health care or corporate taxes or better jobs, higher wages, you all have to sit in front of the TV and wait for Robert Mueller to do his job. And that's what was bombarded into people's brains. And it worked. It be worked. In par partly because, Jimmy, our colleagues in the progressive media decided that either consciously or subconsciously that they were going to put careerism over the facts and over doing their job. So it meant that the amount of people who were pushing back and doing our jobs were completely marginalized and attacked and there was just no space for it. So people weren't presented with any, if your news sources are the New York Times or MSNBC, you weren't given anything else. You weren't given the actual yeah. facts and it worked. It's a uh, it's a textbook case of manufacturing consent. Even it's like supersized manufacturing consent because manufacturing consent in the original book by Chomsky and Herman doesn't account for even progressive lefty media playing along. Yeah, and, not, and even the progressive lefty media, uh, most of it pushed Russiagate and even the ones who didn't push it didn't debunk it because yeah. they were cowardly. Because they Absolutely. knew it, because they knew if they would debunk it, because they even the ones who didn't believe in it didn't debunk yeah. it because they were cowards. Because they knew if they stuck their chin out, fucking CNN's going to write a bullshit article about them, and yeah. it's going to stay in their Wikipedia page till they're dead. And that's what happened to me, and that's what happened to you, and Gray Zone, and Matt, everybody else who who tried to debunk this. Uh, but and, and so that's why they so just cowards on the left, cowards, 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 which is why there's no left in America. And by the way, the woman I'm talking about, my good, she's a good friend. And uh, and she's smarter than me, and she's we talk about she's my friend. She's she's tutoring me on Jungian stuff. She knows way more about it than I do, and it, it, so that's why I keep bringing that up, right? So it's just it's just goes to my my old college roommate, uh, not college, my old roommate from comedy. Uh, every time I talk about his fucking Trump, Trump, I go, you're still still so he was about to lose his house, right? Because he, they, he, they wouldn't give him a loan because he he's just a comedian, he can't work. And so he, he's, he's got $700,000 equity in his house. Mm. But he doesn't have any money to make the payments right now, so he wanted to take out a second just to get him through the COVID thing. And, and they wouldn't give it to him because he doesn't have any income. Now he goes, that's why I need the loan because of COVID. You know I'm a fucking comedian. I've got $700,000 in equity in this house. I'm not going to walk away from it. Yeah. And they still wouldn't give it to him. And when he called me, he's what is he still bitching about? Trump. Mm. I go, you're about mm. to lose your fucking house. And they won't give you and your wife a two thousand dollar check for until this COVID is over so you can pay your mortgage. And you're still upset about fucking Trump. You still think Trump is the enemy and not this system. Yes. He's, there's a guy literally about to lose his fucking house. He's still, he's talking, all he want to do is talk about January 6th and the insurrection. Can you believe that shit? I'm like, you're about to lose your house. Yeah. And they won't yeah. give you relief. Anyway, here's, here's another one. Russia's, Russia is researching on how to, <laughs> how to weaponize deadly Ebola virus as part of a <laughs> catastrophic doomsday project. <laughs> 
They're going to weaponize <laughs> Ebola. It's what the They're going to try and make Ebola deadly? What do you mean? Oh my god. A unit of the FSB spy agency is believed to be researching Ebola and Marin, the Marburg virus. Diseases lead to organ failure and internal bleeding and have caused outbreaks. Ex-intelligence insider fears Moscow could be going beyond studying diseases. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. I think I think they they wrote this headline by like pulling bad things out of a hat. Like yeah. they were just like Russia is trying to weaponize. All right, shake it up good. Shake it up good. We might get we might get syphilis, we might get uh, <laughs> SARS, we might get let's see. Up oh, Ebola. Ebola. Thanks for picking that out there, Evie. We got Ebola and then it's like it, it, to have a, a deadly or- catastrophic we might get um we might get Armageddon. We might get a uh, Hell's Day. We might oh Doomsday. All right, all right, Doomsday. All right, uh, copy and print that and just throw whatever press release matches. And again, it's projection. The U.S. has run a biological terror campaign against Cuba for decades. They've introduced viruses there that killed livestock and and hurt people. Even now with the with the coronavirus, the U.S. has weaponized that too, bullying nations into not accepting the Russian vaccine in Brazil, which really needed it because Brazil's got probably the worst outbreak in the world, uh, pressuring Panama not to accept Cuban doctors yeah. to help them out. Uh, that's the U.S. weaponizing the vaccine and weaponizing this pandemic. So, again, it's, it, it's always projection in more ways than one. Will Russia weaponize its wheat as the world combats the coronavirus? <laughs> we got it. Hey, China and Russia have weaponized space with killer energy weapon satellites. <laughs> hey, you know, fake, Jimmy, fake yeah, news yeah. and botnets, how Russia weaponized the web. I have to go back to that headline about wheat for a second, because, again, projection. That's what the U.S. is doing right now in Syria. There's a great article at The Gray Zone by Ben Norton where it's called something like using wheat as a weapon. And that is quoting a U.S. official who talked about the fact that the U.S. is now occupying one third of Syria and that region holds Syria's wheat reserves. And this person talked about using wheat as a weapon to put pressure on Syria to give in to U.S. demands. And what that means right now on the ground is that Syria is facing a famine and they can't access their own wheat because the U.S. controls it. So, again, projection. That is that is exactly right. So that's a version of siege warfare. Yep. Yep that we're doing in Syria right now, occupying their wheat fields and their oil fields. Yep. It's just amazing. All right, that's it. We've finished that segment. That's an amazing segment. Oh, my God. And so I just want to go back to the beginning of this to thank the guy who started this. Jesus, these are hilarious. They're all funny. Uh, Brian McDonald. Thank you, Brian McDonald, for doing this, putting that together. We added some of our own. Uh, I just said, cake. I'll never forget how Russia tried to weaponize Charlie Sheen. <laughs> what's That's where it all started. What's behind an odd international campaign to free a Russian operative from a Libyan jail? That's by Dean Sterling Jones and Amy McKinnon. That's September 23rd, 2020. Those, those are people I'm very proud of. They're very proud of their work. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Next, we're going to weaponize Kevin Bacon and get all six degrees. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.